No, Harry, he's going to put him right in there in center field tonight. Darren Jackson last year for San Diego was one of the best players in the league. He had 18 outfield assists. Uh, he's a good hitter. He has some power against Danny Jackson, who he's going to face tonight. Nine for 18 with two home runs. The strange thing about the Mets situation is the one position they had that was doing a good job was a platoon in center field. And now they're going to put Darren Jackson out there. So, you know, we'll just see what happens with him. Dallas Green also uh, really appreciates his starting pitcher tonight. Doc Gooden is not the Doc Gooden of old, but he's still mighty good. And Chris had a chance to talk to Big D about Doc Gooden. He's the epitome of a team leader. He, he in the clubhouse, he goes about his work very, very intently. He prepares himself for every single day for, for his next start. And when he goes out on the mound, you know you're going to get quality work. You're going to get you're going to get everything he possibly has. He has a quality that Robin Roberts had for me in that in that when the gong gets tough, he really can reach down and go after something and get that extra to get out of a jam. He's done it many times for me here uh, the last three or four games that he's pitched for me. And uh, I can't say enough about Doc. Doc is is what the Mets are all about. So it'll be the Doc and Danny Jackson for the Phils. And we'll be back with the starting lineups for tonight's game right after these messages. The Phillies and the New York Mets is being brought to you by Budweiser. Fresh, pure, natural, proud to be your bud. By Mellon PSFS, the official bank of the Phillies. By the Bell Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. No other book can match it. A Bell Atlantic Company. And by Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield. Carry us for life. time for the live drawing of the daily number. Draw the first digit, please. Now the second digit. Yes. Yes. Draw the third digit. Yes! Well, yes! there you have it. That's oh, today's boy! daily number. Whoa! Look at it! Look at it! It's a state number! I got it! Bernie! Look at this! Look at this! Look at this! There's a new feeling sweeping the state. Peace of mind. Because now people who couldn't afford health coverage can get special care from Blue Cross and Blue Shield. It's the most affordable coverage available to families and individuals who earn too much for Medicaid but can't afford coverage on their own. If you're uninsured, your peace of mind is just a phone call away. Call 1-800-248-5200. Like at Chase Stadium in New York, pretty good crowd on hand tonight. We had the Upper Deck Heroes Old Timers game before this game, bringing back the participants in the 73 World Series, the Mets and the Oakland A's. And we have a pleasant night for this third game of the series. Doc Gooden goes for New York, Danny Jackson for the Phils, Jim Fregosi and John Vukovic. In the Phillies dugout, and Jim Fregosi again will be playing Kim Baptiste at third base with the absence of Dave Hollins. This afternoon, Baltimore beat Boston 5-1. to one. Brad Pennington was the winner in that game. Greg Harris took the loss. Just ended the candlestick. The Giants hang on to beat the Cubs 5-4. to four. Bill Swift won at his 8-3. Chuck McElroy lost at 2-2. Two two. Rod Beck recorded his 18th save. So San Francisco knocking off the Cubs. And those Cubs only had a game and a two, or rather a one game lead over those Florida Marlins coming into play today. Florida half a game behind Pittsburgh and a game behind Chicago coming into play. 
Well, that'll be the team the Phillies see at Veterans Stadium beginning on Thursday, a four-game series. And the Marlins, an expansion team, has certainly been competitive. Last night, Marlins had a team record 21 hits against those Buccos. They won six of their last seven. And they are eight and a half games ahead of the New York Mets. And as we mentioned, just a half a game behind Pittsburgh and a full game behind, now a half a game behind the Cubs. Jim Fregosi taking out the Phillies lineup. Bobby Wine taking out the lineup for the New York Mets for this third game of the series. The Phillies' lead in the National League East now is ten and a half games over St. Louis and Montreal, who are deadlocked in second. The Cubs are 13 and a half back with their loss today. Pittsburgh 13 and a half back. Florida 14 back, and the Mets are 22 and a half games out. San Francisco at their win this afternoon, opening a six-game lead over Houston. Atlanta six and a half back, then Los Angeles seven and a half. The Reds are 10 back, then San Diego 13 and a half, and Colorado well back at 20 games out of first place. The Detroit Tigers have won two in a row against Toronto. Overall, they have won four in a row, and they've opened a three-game lead over the Jays in the American League East. The Yankees are four back. Baltimore winning this afternoon seven back. They've won ten in a row now, have the O's. Boston has lost seven in a row with their loss this afternoon. They're nine and a half back. Then Cleveland ten and a half. Or rather, Milwaukee ten and a half and Cleveland 13. In the American League West, Kansas City has a game and a half lead over both California and Chicago. Texas comes next at four back, along with Minnesota, also four back. Then Seattle six and Oakland nine and a half in the most tightly bunched race in baseball, American League West. Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Rutkowski celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. Golden wedding anniversary in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. There's the Phillies bench, and Jim Fregosi has a bench to work with this year. It's certainly been a good one. The everyday players have been well supported by the bench. Gina Panicelli of Lansdowne, Pennsylvania, 29th birthday today. The Phillies remain one player short right now. They're still trying to make another move, and uh, so they come into the ball game tonight with 24 players available. Jim Fregosi's lineup tonight will have Lenny Dykstra in center field leading off. Mariano Duncan, shortstop, bat second. John Kruk, first base, hitting third. Darren Dalton will catch him bat fourth. Jim Eisenreich, right fielder, hitting fifth. Milt Thompson, the left fielder, bat six. Kim Baptiste, third base, hitting seventh. Mickey Moore and Dini at second base will bat eight. And batting ninth and pitching will be Danny Jackson. They'll be facing the right-hander, Doc Good. There is Doc Gooden, six foot three, 210 pounder. Doc now 28 years of age out of Tampa, Florida. Number one pick in June of 1982 by the New York Mets. Fifth overall in the draft that year. And 15 and 10 lifetime against the Phillies. Defensively behind the dock, it'll be Jeff Kent playing at third base tonight. At shortstop is Tim Bogard, Jeff McKnight at second, Eddie Murray at first. Charlie O'Brien is the catcher in the outfield from left to right. Vince Coleman, Darren Jackson, newly acquired in center, and Bobby Bonilla in right. Honey Dystra will lead it off. Dystra hitting a 282. Lifetime against Doc, he's a 300 hitter. Umpires tonight, Mark Hirschbeck has the plate at first base, Brian Gorman. Bruce Fremming, the crew chief at second, and Jerry Davis, umpires at third. Fastball is high to Dykstra, one ball and no strikes. Gooden leads the league in innings pitched, 102 and two-thirds innings coming into this game. Sixth in the league in ERA at 272, and he misses with that one, two and nothing. Very familiar is Doc Gooden to Phillies fans. Fastball, curveball, straight change. Ball 
right? He has two speeds of his curveball. He'll throw a hard one and he'll throw one almost a change up curveball. Just missed. Three balls and one strike. Doc is among the league leaders in complete games with four of them. Two shutouts tied for the league lead in that department. Dykes Gray is aboard with a walk. Lenny leads the league and runs scored with 51. And the Phillies continue to draw a lot of walks as they lead the league by a lot in that category. And it's one of the reasons why they've had such great run production this year is because they have so many batters who walk. Here's Mariano Duncan, Dunk batting at 257. Not a good lifetime hitter against Gooden, 172 lifetime. He has hit one career home run off him. Right there for a strike. Gooden's a little bit better holding runners on than when he first came up, but has a decent move to first, but still has a fairly high leg kick to home plate, and you can run on him, so Dykstra might think about running. Back keeping him close. Dykstra has stolen 14 bases. He's been thrown out four times. Good at first came to the major leagues. He had hardly any move at all at first base because he wasn't used to that many people being on first. Well, he pitched an amateur ball and in the minors. He broke in with a bang, was rookie of the year in 1984, 17 and 9 that year with a 2.60 ERA. Led the league in strikeouts with 276. Then he followed it up with an unbelievable year. Dykstra started, read the pitch out, and he stopped one ball and one strike. In 85, he was the youngest player ever to win the Cy Young Award at age 20 when he went 24 and 4 with a 1.53 ERA. Just an incredible sophomore season. Yes, yeah, first year in the major leagues, he was 19 years of age. He's just been a tremendous competitor to the whole time he's been in the big leagues. He's had some arm trouble the last couple years. You saw in the pregame tonight how uh, Dallas Green talked about him and what a job he's done for him since he's been managing. Dykstra goes, but Duncan fouls off the fastball. One ball and two strikes. Doc is 70. Doc is 79 games over 500 in his career. One hundred and forty nine and seventy. Dykstra goes again. He got a tremendous jump and he's safe at second. Stolen base. Lenny Dykstra is 15. Got a great jump as Harry said and there's also a curveball by Doc Gooden. So the combination of the, of the pitch and the jump and no matter what O'Brien does here he can't get him. O'Brien does a pretty good job with a quick release of even making this a play. It shouldn't even been close. Curveball ball hit on the ground is shortstop Bogar off balance throw in the dirt dug out nicely by Murray and Duncan is out. So Duncan did not move the runner and the batter will be John Bruck. It's probably pretty good base running by Dykstra then he started to go when he saw that ball was hit to the right because it was hit slowly. But Bogar was playing fairly shallow got on it quickly and Lenny knew that he had a chance to get him at third no sense in getting thrown out at third in that situation. Here's Crocker. He's second in the league in hitting, batting at 360. Second in the league in on base percentage, seventh in slugging percentage. Third ball that missed, one ball and no strikes. Lifetime against the Phillies, Gooden is 15 and 10. Second base, McKnight throws out Crock. Dykstra moves up to third. And with two outs, it'll bring on Darren Dalton. Dutch batting at 250, second in the league in RBIs with 52. 
lifetime against Gooden. He's a 275 hitter. Happy anniversary, number 43 to Joe and Teresa Fury from Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Last ball for a strike, nothing and one to Dalton. Janine Ivey, Kira and Steph watching the game back in Center City. Last ball is low, one and one. One ball and one strike to Dalton with Dykstra at third base, two outs here in the first. Third ball that he beats foul at the plate. Ball and two strikes. Good when he first came into the league, had a high riding fastball that he was a, he was a, just a dominant strikeout pitcher with it. He changed after a couple of years. He still can throw that pitch, but you'll see him sink his fastball more now and run it away from left-handed batters. He'll still get his strikeouts, but he tries to get him to hit ground balls off. Fastball just missed. Two that's, what, two. that's what I mean. That's what he'll do. Uh, you know, he won't go necessarily go after hitters go up the ladder the way that he did when he was younger. Fastball tapped on the ground to shortstop. Bogart throws out Dalton, and that will retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left after one half fills nothing. New York coming to bat. So... I hear you're thinking about buying one of those high-priced, sporty luxury cars. Well, they certainly come loaded and sure look great. Before you go off and spend all that money, let me just show you the Oldsmobile 88 Special Edition. It has standard features like anti-lock brakes, cruise, power windows and locks, an airbag, and more. And it costs only $18,995. It's your money. printers from Hewlett Packard. It's easy to make it happen. It's a replica of a 1933 Phillies cap, free for men 15 and over. Compliments of Texaco when the Phillies play the new Florida Marlins Sunday, June 20th at 135. Great way to cap off a weekend. Call 463 one Dallas Green's New York lineup tonight will have Vince Coleman in left field leading off. Charlie O'Brien catching batting second. Eddie Murray first base hits third. Bobby Bonilla right fielder bats fourth. Darren Jackson in center field hitting fifth. Jeff Kent third base bats sixth. Jeff McKnight second base hitting seventh. Tim Bogar the shortstop bats eighth and batting ninth and pitching. Doc Gooden. And on the mound for the Phillies, a six-foot, 205-pound left-hander, 31 years of age, Danny Jackson from San Antonio, Texas, also a number one pick by Kansas City in January of 82. There you see the numbers on Danny. Lifetime against New York, five and three. He's coming off a win against Houston. Defensively behind Jackson, Kim Batiste at third base, Mariano Duncan at short, Mickey Morandini at second, John Cruck at first, Aaron Dalton catching in the outfield from left to right. Milt Thompson, Lenny Dykstra, and Jim Eisenreich. Vince Coleman leads it off, hitting a 252. Switch hitter bats 203 right handed, 271 left handed. Jackson lifetime against New York is 5 and 3. Good career ERA of 2.29. strike to Coleman. Up in the box as if the bunt took the pitch. It was close but called a ball one and one. I haven't seen Coleman try to bunt in this series before that. Uh, the word had been that he was he's not going to do that much anymore. Uh, he has Kim Batiste, the third baseman, in at third, even a little bit more after that. He 
He's high with it. It's two and one. He balls in a strike to Vince Coleman. Slams the ball to right field. That is a fair ball and one hop and off the fence. Coleman will get an easy double on it. Was a field double by Vince Coleman. And it'll bring up Charlie O'Brien. O'Brien could possibly bunt here. Coleman got a fastball out over the plate and just went the other way with it. Danny Jackson got behind in the count. There you see the ball up in the strike zone. He hits it hard to right field, an easy double for him. With Doc Gooden pitching, that's we'll try to get. Early runs and right. figure they don't have to get a whole lot of runs to win the game. Right. What they'll do in this situation with O'Brien is Dallas Green will decide whether or not he'll let him work the ball to the right side, whether he's capable of that, or whether he would rather try and bunt the ball and move the runner over. Charlie O'Brien hitting a 216. He is going to bunt the ball. He bunts it nicely. Fielded by Danny Jackson. Throws O'Brien out, but the sacrifice is good. Coleman dancing off the line in third because nobody is out there. But Mickey Moore and Deeney running the ball in. Jackson, Jackson's really a good athlete and a good fielder, but he made a play there that he really didn't need to make, and he was a little out of control for a while. Baptiste had that play perfectly. Uh, there was nobody covering third, so there's really no reason for Danny to make this play unless he thought that Baptiste was covering third. You see what happened there? He could have slipped. Something could have gone wrong. And there was no need for him really to be there to make that play. Here's Eddie Murray hitting a 271, batting a 204 right handed, 255 left handed. Slider for a strike to him, nothing and one. Only lifetime is hitting 268 against Danny Jackson. The only way they wouldn't get a run here uh, is if a ball should be hit sharply to Cruck at first. He's the only infielder up. Check swing foul ball nothing in two. Vince Coleman at third base with one out here in the bottom of the first. Side almost hit him a ball and two strikes. So Jackson did well in his start against Houston was pitch inside. He had a good fastball, a good live, hard breaking ball inside to the right-handed batters. And when Danny can do that, that's when he's most effective. Low with it. Two balls and two strikes to Eddie Murray. to Murray. Bobby Bonilla do up next. He's gotten ahead of Murray 0-2. You see the bench looking on there. And what he's tried to do is strike him out uh, instead of letting him make contact and get an easy run for New York. And as a result, <laughs> he's had the ball down to him and Murray hasn't chased any of those pitches because they really haven't been the kind that you're going to chase. Miss with a slider. He walked him. Well, the Mets have runners at first and third with one out for Bobby Bonilla. He's been a hot hitter. Heading at 259, tied for second in the league in homers with 16. He's knocked in 40. Six in the league in slugging percentage. Phillies will now put their infield at double play depth and hope they can get Bonilla to hit him double play and get out of the inning. High time Bobby Bo at 241 hitter against Danny Jackson. He has hit two career home runs off him. Chase the low pitch. That's a, 
That's a pitch here. He was trying to get Murray to chase the hole at bat. A, a slider down, and Bonilla went after it. No balls and a strike to Bobby Bonilla. Chops the ball softly foul. Broke his bat on the foul ball. Banged himself in the helmet. Well, maybe he didn't break his bat. No, he, he didn't. He just didn't like his swing at that particular pitch. He just put on that little act of his, that's all, where he strolls around, hits himself in the head with a helmet. Murray heads back to first. He's in the hole, nothing in two. Coleman at third, Murray at first with one out. Struck him out. That's a big strikeout for Danny Jackson. Not a good at bat for Bonilla. I don't believe he had a strike in the hole at bat, and he swung at all three pitches. Two down. Everything that Murray did not do, Bonilla did do for Jackson. He kept chasing the sliders in the dirt or, or down. And as Harry said, they were not in the strike zone, but he got more and more defensive as he got behind in the count and kept on chasing them. Here's Darren Jackson in his first game as a Met, just over from Toronto in the Tony Fernandez deal. He has great lifetime numbers against Jackson. Nine for 18 with two homers. Phillies uh, always felt that this guy was a dead middle in hitter and a high ball hitter. Uh, maybe, maybe uh, as we see his Toronto numbers there, he didn't hit much up there. Maybe they'll have Jackson change his approach to him a little bit. Tried to bunt for a hit. What was that? I don't know. <laughs> Just figuring Baptiste is strange to third base and could beat out a bunt hit. But what were those numbers you gave on him against Danny Jackson? Nine for 18. Yeah, you don't bunt. I wouldn't think so. With two outs. Brown <laughs> ball. Mickey Moore and Beatty throws out Jackson and that'll retire to side. No runs, one hit, no errors, and two left. After one, nothing, nothing. When you were a child, you were told we're all created equal. But now that you're a little older, you see things a bit differently. The new Lexus GS Luxury Performance Sedan. It's roomier, quieter, and rides smoother than cars costing thousands more. Maybe we are all created equal, but it doesn't have to stay that way. See your New Jersey, Delaware, Pennsylvania area Lexus dealer for treatment that's unequaled. The metal cylinder is secured and turned in a counterclockwise motion, causing the internal rating to rise and disengage. It's easy to make something as simple as opening a jar complex. The challenge is making the complex simple. But that's what we do at Bell Atlantic Mobile. We take cutting edge technology and place it comfortably in your hands. Bell Atlantic Mobile. Advanced technology and people will make it mean something. What's he doing? Better you or him. Okay. I'm here to show you the new Panasonic Palm Quarter camcorder with digital image stabilizer. I think I'm gonna be sick. It helps hold the picture steady even when your hand shakes this much. And Palm Quarter tapes can play in any VHS recorder. So why buy a camcorder whose tapes can't play in your VCR? I don't know. The choice is obvious. The Panasonic Palm Quarter. Its tapes will play in your VCR. It's got shot dogs. <clears throat> After one inning of play, it's the Phil's nothing and New York nothing. Upcoming Phillies telecasts include tomorrow afternoon's final game of this Mets series. We'll be on the air at 1 o'clock for the pregame show, followed by the game at 1.30, then Monday night's opening game of the Expos series starting at 7.30. Happy Golden Wedding Anniversary to Charles and Grace Hartman of Pottsville. 50 years and happy birthday number 85 to Lillian Madsen of Philadelphia. Jim Eisenreich leads it off for the Phils. Looks at a strike. Eisenreich hitting a 360. Never faced Doc Gooden before. Over from the American League. 
One ball and one strike. Beats the fastball foul. One and two. with a fastball. Two balls and two strikes. Kurt Schilling in the Phil's dugout. What a great effort he gave them last night. Jim Fergosi really happy with what Schilling did. Curveball got him. Eisenreich knew it. He's called out on strikes. First strike out for Doc. One down here in the second. That's a pitch where a hitter, as you look at Schilling there, talking to Johnny Padres, where hitter gets totally fooled on it and takes the pitch because there's nothing else he can do. His knee buckles. Watch his front. Whoops. Just hope it's a ball. Here's Mel Thompson and Doc Gooden has given Thompson fits in his career. Mel is 0 for 23 lifetime against the Doc. So those numbers of Eddie Murray's last night, he wound up what 0 for 12, over 19 now against Kurt Schilling. Mm -hmm. So similar numbers. Yeah. Doc probably throws him a lot of curveballs. Broken bat chopper to second base and McKnight just gets Mel Thompson. That's two down, and that'll bring on Kim Baptiste. It's a really surprising numbers for a guy like Thompson off a hard thrower. He started him with a curveball, then threw a fastball, jammed him, broke his bat, and McKnight playing at second base throws him out by a step. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Phillies. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of the Phillies. Baptiste hitting a 333 in his third home run of the year here last night. Fouls it back and out of play. No balls and a strike to Kim Baptiste. Third ball, good one. Nothing in two. Yeah, that's even worse for a hitter from the right side when he throws that at, it, at you because it, he throws it right at the hitter and then here it comes over the plate. Fastball wide, one and two. Good looks like he's healthy again. I mean, he's never going to throw like he did in those early years that Harry mentioned, but he's still a quality pitcher. Curve ball. Locked in, just missed with it a little bit high. It's a Nolan Ryan type curve ball where, where a right-handed batter is almost defenseless against it when he's throwing it well. And they'll almost always take it. You just hope he's missing with it. Another deuce is hit on the ground at third base. Kent throws across in time to get Baptiste. Now will retire the side. No runs, hits, errors, and none left. We go to the bottom of the second. Nothing, nothing. The Phillies close out a four-game set in the city that never sleeps with their Eastern Division rivals, the New York Mets, tomorrow afternoon on PHL 17. Bobby Bunny and the Mets are trying to climb back into the penetrates, but Lenny Dykstra and the Fighting Phils intend on staying one step ahead. Be there as the Phils take on the Mets tomorrow afternoon at 1.30, following Neil Heitman at the pregame show at 1 on PHL 17. We play the Phillies on 17. Phils Mets tomorrow at 1.30. The Phillies are making fireworks during the games, and we've got two spectacular fireworks shows after the San Diego games. Friday, July 2nd, when a doubleheader starts at 435, and Saturday, July 3rd at 705. Then all kids 14 and under get a free batting helmet when the series wraps up Sunday night, July 4th at 805. Two fireworks spectaculars, free batting helmets, great baseball. Call 463-1000. If you want a tough American-built truck, and you've been waiting for the best time to buy your new truck, then see your Quality Plus Ford dealer. June is Ford Truck Month. Save on every number one selling truck in stock, including F-150s, Explorers, Aerostars, Econoline Vans, and the all-new Ranger. Get double bonus discounts and special rebates for a limited time. Hurry, Ford Truck Month. End soon. See your Quality Plus Ford dealer today. You better hit the ground running in a new Ford truck. I don't need some fancy cologne to tell me I'm a man. I use Skin Bracer. It smells great. But it also cools and tones my skin. Confidence is very sexy. Don't you think? Skin Bracer Aftershave. By Menon. Well, 
will be the 10th reunion of the 1983 National League champion Phils taking on a team of Major League All-Stars in the Upper Deck Heroes baseball game on Saturday, a week from tonight at Veterans Stadium. That game starts at 6. Then the Phils and the Florida Marlins at 7.30. Mike Schmidt, Tug McGraw, Sarge Matthews, Gary Maddox, Bon Hayes, John Denny, Tony Perez will all be on hand. So plan to be there for the Upper Deck Heroes baseball game. For tickets, call 463-1000. Jeff Kent fouls one back and out of play. No balls and a strike. Kent hitting a 224. He was their everyday second baseman who was making a lot of errors at second. Playing third tonight. Howard Johnson is out and has been for this series. Line shot hit to left field. I don't really know what's the matter with Howard Johnson. He's had several tests. He's had numbness of the joints, dizzy spells. I don't know what's the matter with Ojo. It's a fastball out over the plate from Danny Jackson, and Duncan trying to time his leap and the ball over his glove in the left field for a base hit. Yeah, they're very concerned about Howard Johnson. They know he won't play this weekend, and they don't know really when he's going to play again. Ojo is the subject of trade rumors that if healthy and when healthy that Mets might move him and that he could opt for free agency after this year Jeff McKnight fouls it off. Well their house cleaning started yesterday when Tony Fernandez was dealt. Now that's just the, the, the old tip of the iceberg with the New York Mets they're going to move a lot of people here. He will not recognize this team next year. No, I think they will make quite a few moves. They have indicated as much. Dallas Green and Al Harrison. Yeah, they, they have a lot of players on this team you think should be doing better than they are, but they just have a bad mix. One ball and one strike to McKnight. Well, the Phillies have the real good clubhouse camaraderie and the players that really get along and all the things that are helping them this year. The Mets just don't have that. And Dallas Green. I think he's down there on a recon right now for the whole season just to find out who should be here and who should. Fouls it out of play, trying to hit behind the runner. One and two. Hojo certainly does not figure in that because Howard Johnson would fit in with any team anywhere. He's a good guy and a good player and a hard nosed player. So that wouldn't be a reason why they would think about dealing Hojo just to rebuild their ball club. Yeah, they try and trade him, get three players for him or yeah. something. You know, one of those kind of deals where they could uh, start rebuilding. Missing, it's two balls and two strikes. Happy birthday, number 87, to Nedra Brand of Mount Joy and Alice Luke of Paoli. She's 89. Two balls and two strikes to make night. Count at first base. Nobody out here in the second. Nothing, nothing game. Struck him out with a slider. Second strike out for Danny Jackson. One down here in the second. It'll bring on Tim Bogar. This ball is up a little bit, but McKnight swings through it. He's not hitting much. See that? That's a ball that, you know, Danny likes that slider. But it's not a good one. It's uh, you know he gets a strikeout on it, but it's one that he hung a little bit, and and maybe a better right-handed batter would have put that one in play and hit it hard. Bogar batting at 196, getting a chance to play now with the trade of Tony Fernandez. The step-off move by Danny Jackson that he learned from Terry Mulholland. He doesn't throw it nearly as hard to first as Mulholland does, but. Picked it up as an element of surprise. A new look for him. One ball and no strikes. There's Terry Mulholland who has that step off move. And he's having trouble picking anybody off this year because nobody takes a lead on him. Only Jim Tatum. Yeah, Jim Tatum. Poor guy in Colorado had no clue, did he? Got hit by a pitch ball, took a good size <laughs> lead. 225 pounds taking that kind of lead off Mulholland. Buck was playing first that day and 
So man it's tough when you get hit by a pitch and then you get picked off as he takes him out. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> There's the trucker. Truck trying to battle through that sore knee after he ran into Hundley here the other night at home plate. Ball on the strike to Bogar. Taps a foul. Nice catch by John Bukovic in the dugout. Yeah, throws it in the stands for a souvenir for a fan. He's all hired, Book. Well, yeah, yeah, he's showing see. those hands. Well, it's a good thing he had good hands, you know. Look at <laughs> Dallas <laughs> looking at him. <laughs> 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 Dallas Green once hired Book to manage the Cubs. Lasted about two hours. <laughs> then Dallas resigned. <laughs> and the Phillies hired Vukovic as a coach. They are great friends, those two. I wonder if Dallas might not get Lee Elia back with him next year. Lee in Seattle is the dugout coach for Lou Pinella. Well, I'm sure they'll talk about it. Is Dallas, uh, that's another guy that Dallas Green thinks the world of, Lee Ilian. Lee, uh, Lee was coached for him at, with the Yankees, of course, managed for Dallas at Chicago. Missing, it's a full count to Bogar. See how aggressive they get here. You normally don't run that often in this situation because a strikeout double play, you lead off with the pitcher. But Gooden and, can hit. Right, and so you'd like to have Gooden come up in this inning. You're not necessarily trying to get him out of the way as right. a hitter. I wouldn't think they'd run. Little tapper up the middle, fielded by Moore and Beatty, double play. His whiteness, our colleague suggested that with this lineup, Doc ought to be hitting sixth or seventh. I'm sure Bogar would love that comment. Yeah. No runs, one hit, <laughs> no errors, and none left. The end of two, it's nothing, nothing. your car done right it has to be done by the right people we take care of our customers we do the job right quality all the way experience counts the customer comes first satisfaction guaranteed we're only as good as our people that's why jiffy loop is america's favorite oil change we got experience at jiffy loop this is a line to some, it is seen as a barrier. To others, it's a point where traditions of the past are abandoned in favor of visions of the future. Introducing the revolutionary new Toyota Supra. It's taken everything sports cars were before and crossed the line. It's the 10th reunion of the National League champs. The 83 Phillies play an 83 All-Star team Saturday, June 19th, 6 p.m. in the Heroes of Baseball game, compliments of Upper Deck. Before the Phillies play the Marlins at 7.35, call 463-1000. Our trivia question tonight. In 1961, the New York Yankees set the record for the most homers in a season, 240 home runs. Maris, of course, hit his record-breaking 61. Mantle had 54. The Yankees had four other players that year with 20 or more home runs. Can you name them? Mickey Morandini leads it off. One strike to him. Mickey hitting at 232. Mickey's been a good lifetime hitter against Doc Gooden. 375 lifetime. One ball and one strike. The 
missing. It's two and one. That went over two and two. Balls and two strikes. Struck him out. Second strikeout for Doc. One down here in the third. That'll bring up Danny Jackson. Well, we mentioned earlier that he goes down and away from left-handed batters now. Well, that's what he's done to Dalton to get him out on a ground ball to short. And he goes down and away from Mickey Morandini to get him out. It's a, it's a very different Doc Gooden than the guy that broke into the league with the was such great flourish a number of years ago, but still a very fine pitcher. Danny Jackson hitting at 120. Fouls off the fastball. One ball and one strike. No base runners. All of two strikes. Third ball. Got him. Third strikeout for Doc. Two down here in the third. It'll bring up Lenny Dykstra. He's been the only Phillies base runner. He walked his first time up. Doc Gooden here at home is five and three. His ERA at Shea this year is one nine two. A week from tomorrow at Veterans Stadium is Cap Day for all men 15 and over. Nostalgic style Phillies baseball caps this year's will be from the 33 uniforms compliments of Texaco it's the Phillies and the Marlins that day at 135 four tickets call 463 1000. in the left center field shallow and Darren Jackson can't come up with it. Dykstra will hold it first as Jackson quickly recovers. Single to left center for Lenny Dykstra. Billy's first hit of the night and that'll bring up Mariano Duncan. Darren Jackson for some reason has sunglasses on his cap out there. Wonder why guys do that. Here he comes in. He's playing shallow so he had a chance to catch that ball and then it bounces away and he keeps it in front of him. Uh, he'll play more shallow than the other two guys who are out there. Orsalak and Gallagher have done a pretty good job for New York. Dykstra going on the first pitch. He slides head first, not anticipating the ball getting by O'Brien. Stolen base for Lenny, his second of the night, his 16th of the year. Whether Lenny can pick up Doc Gooden gripping the curveball in his glove or whether he's just been fortunate and run both times on breaking balls with Lenny, he, he, he makes such a study of the game it's possible. But to break that way on the first pitch, you almost think that he knew a curveball was going to be thrown there. One ball and no strikes to Mariano Duncan. Her ball grounded up the middle, a base hit center field. Letty Dykstra will score. Phils take a one to nothing lead here in the third. An RBI single by Duncan. And Dykstra crosses the plate for the 52nd time this year. Dykstra just doing a great job now out of the leadoff spot that Lenny Dykstra we've seen around here for so many years now when he's healthy. And he just a perfect table setter. He steals a base on the first pitch. And then the breaking ball, Duncan hits it right back through the middle. He scores easily. Nothing Darren Jackson can do about this. So the Phils take a one to nothing lead and the batter will be John Crock who grounded out his first time up. Fastball, one and nothing. Birthday wishes tonight to Helen Rothermel of Lewistown, Pennsylvania, and to Patrick Bork of Edders, PA. Had a 
cut. He fouled it back. One ball and one strike to Cruck. Cruck lifetime 277 against Doc. He has hit two career homers off him. Doc could have started and stopped. And Cruck takes a breaking ball for a strike. One and two. Well, he went a long way to stop. I don't know whether Duncan thought he saw a pitch out then or not because the pitch was, you know, running away from Cruck because he sure threw on the brakes. Ball and two strikes to John Cruck. O'Brien just gave uh, Doc Gooden a sign to move over to first because of the jump that Duncan had got. You could see the way he just flapped his hand. That meant move over there. Duncan again starting and stopping. Two and two the count to John Crow. <laughs> There's a sign for Kruk. Oh, the security guard just told him to put it down. Now Duncan goes, but it doesn't matter. Got him with a curveball. Doc strikes out the side. He has four strikeouts now, but the Phillies get a run on two hits, no errors, and one left. We go to the bottom of the third. One nothing, Phillies. First, Roy Rogers introduced their juicy bacon cheeseburger on sourdough bread. Then they introduced Roy's real roast beef on sourdough bread. And now, there's Roy's great tasting sourdough grilled chicken sandwich with Monterey Jack cheese and Hellman's Dijonese. Yep, looks like Roy's sandwiches are really on a roll. I thought you said they were on sourdough bread. I did. Oh, uh, he said roll. Yeah, I roll. That's what he said. You said that I was bread. right. Roll bread, sourdough bread. What do you mean roll bread? There's nothing to do with a roll. Roy Rogers. Birth sells balloons. Bob sells balloons. Birth sells wacky gifts. Bob sells wacky gifts. Birth delivers. Bob delivers. So if Bob's got everything Brit's got, why's Brit busy and Bob not? Now, do you suppose Brit's got a big color ad in the book nine out of ten people use? The genuine Bella Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. Nine out of ten use it. No other book can match it. A ballot like the color. Budweiser and the Phillies are celebrating the 4th of July holiday weekend with the Bud Summer Baseball Bash. It's a special tent party outside Veterans Stadium on Monday, July 5th before the Phillies-Dodgers game. Right now, be the 17th caller to 1-800-432-1745 and win four tickets to the party and the game. You'll join us for food, music, and surprises, and then watch the Phillies play the Dodgers. It's the Bud Summer Baseball Bash with Budweiser and the Bills. So bring on the Dodgers and bring on the Bud. Tonight's Phillies game on PHL 17 is brought to you in part by Budweiser. Fresh, pure, natural, proud to be your bud. Buy your quality plus four dealers would invite you to come in and test drive the brand new 1993 Pro. And buy Pizza Hut. Call Pizza Hut delivery now and have your pizza by the sixth inning. Doc Gooden leads it off. Chase is a high fastball. Doc batting at 297. He has hit a home run. Lifetime, he's hit six homers. Has a career average of 203. So he helps himself with the bat. Took a strike there. Doc thought it was low. It was. But he's not going to argue with Hirschbeck because he thinks, well, maybe I'll get one of them later. Fouls it back. Still nothing in two. Couldn't let all National League pitchers in RBIs last year with nine of them. He won that Silver Slugger Award for pitchers. Looks like a hitter. You know what he looks like? He's a great athlete. Yeah. That's what he is. I mean, you look at Doc Gooden, you figure he could play just about any sport he wanted and excel. Mm -hmm. I think in two, it holds to him. Won't be time for the slide ball. Two. Well, he stuck uh, Danny Jackson out on a nasty curveball. So J Jackson might try to come back and get him with something like that. Ball of two strikes to Doc Gooden. Phil's lead one nothing. We are in the third. Fly ball off the to right field. Eisenreich near the line makes the grab. Doc's retired one down. That'll bring on Vince Coleman. He had an opposite field double his first time up. 
Our trivia question of the night. 1961, the New York Yankees set the record for most homers with 240. Maris hit his record-breaking 61, and Mantle had 54. There were four other players that had 20 or more home runs. Can you name them from that Yankee team of 61? Well, Moose Scour might be one of them. Yeah, 28 for Moose. Um, I got to think that Elston Howard hit 20 home runs. That is correct. 21 for Elston Howard. Was Hank Bauer on that club? I don't know. If, I don't think he no. was. Well, then he because he would have hit 20 home runs. If he, all right, so that's not one of them. Oh boy. I figure Richardson didn't. I figure Kubek wasn't a home run hitter. Cleve Boyer wasn't a home run hitter. I don't know. After those two, ain't over till it's over. Yogi. Yogi. Yeah, of course. Right, because Yogi, Yogi played, played the outfield. Some left field that yeah, year. that's right. Yogi played the because he was standing there when Mazeroski's home run went out in 1960. He, in hit, uh, he hit 22 and that John Blanchard. Johnny Blanchard hit 21 that year. He was a catcher also. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Where did he? Get? Howard Blanchard. You figure how those Yogi. guys all get that playing time without a DH in those days to hit that many homers. Struck him out. That's the third strikeout for Danny Jackson. Two down here in the third. It'll bring on Charlie O'Brien, who sacrificed his first time up. Have another golden wedding anniversary. Mr. and Mrs. Vernon Mahana of Hempstead, Maryland. 50 years. Congratulations. That's belated. Two outs and no base runners here in the third. One nothing Phillies. No strikes to Charlie O'Brien. Hits the ball to center. Lenny Dykstra has it lined up, and that'll retire the side. No runs, hits, errors, and none left. The end of three. Rich Ashburn will be joining Chris Wheeler in the fourth. After three, it's one to nothing. Phillips. Sports drink of the Olympic Games with 33% more carbohydrates for energy than Gatorade and great taste. So you can pick up, slam down, and soak in all 32 ounces. Power aid, more power to you. Cadillac has the answers important to you. You feel better driving out of town, don't you? Isn't it great having someone to call? It says quality, doesn't it? When you ask yourself what is important in a car, think of the questions you ask every day. Then think of the car with the answers important to you. The Cadillac DeVille, which also offers a financial answer. A $2,000 bonus direct from Cadillac. The Cadillac DeVille. See your Cadillac Super Network dealers. Business person special number two is coming up on Wednesday, June the 23rd at 1235 when the Atlanta Braves come to town. Get your excuses ready and come on out. Today is compliments of Mellon PSFS. Call 463-1000 for your tickets. Phillies with a run on two hits and no errors. The Mets on no runs, two hits, no errors. Good pitching with Doc Gooden and Danny Jackson. Rich Ashburn joins us in the fourth inning. Where would you rather be, Wheels, than here at the ballpark on a beautiful night like this? Watching these two guys go after each other. And Darren Dalton batting against Good, and he beats it foul first base side. Great play by the ball girl. Let's pause for station identification on the Phillies television network. 
You're watching Phillies baseball on WPHL TV, Philadelphia. Dalton grounded a short his first time up, takes a fastball inside. Gooden hasn't walked anybody, and he's struck out four through the first three innings. Dalton batting in the cleanup spot tonight. Then Jim Eisenreich and Milt Thompson to follow. Three straight left-handed batters to oppose Gooden here in the fourth. Dalton ought to get a ball to hit here. Two balls and one strike to Dalton. Ground ball to second. Murray left the bag, and Gooden has to get over there, and he does. What a fine play by Doc Gooden as McKnight throws him out 4-1, one away. Doc is a pretty good fielder in that he does get over there and cover the bag quickly. Boy, Murray was in no man's land uh -huh. there. He should have stayed home, really, yep. but they got away with it. There's McKnight feeding a good and covering and a perfect hookup. Eisenreich, the batter, he struck out his first time up, first time he'd ever faced good. Curveball misses, ball one. I think the defense has a, a tendency to play better behind Gooden also because they know he's going to throw strikes. They're on their toes all the time, and he's he's a super pitcher. You, you want that guy to, to win if you can. You know you have a chance every night when he goes out there. Grounded to Bogar, gets a big hop, throws out Eisenreich. Two up and two down in the fourth. Good coming into the game tonight, seven and four, with a good earned run average of 2.72. And he's won three in a row in his last three starts. He has an ERA of 2.18. So he's been pitching really well for New York. Milt Thompson, the batter, 0 for 24 lifetime off good after grounding out his last time up to second base. It's hard to believe. Yeah, it is because Milt's a contact hitter. You'd think one of those would fall in. That's how he got him out last time with that inside corner fastball. It broke his bat. Hit the ground ball to the second baseman, McKnight. Here's the 0-2, fouled away. He'll probably come in tight on Milt again where almost everybody tries to pitch Thompson. Hard stuff in on him. Woo. Well, that in on him. It hit him. Checked his uniform, I believe. Yes, it did. He saw his life flash in front of his face, too, as he went down, and the ball did hit him. A hit batter, so the Phillies have a two-out base runner here in the fourth inning on the hit batsman. And Milt has, has stolen seven bases. He he should try to run here with two outs. What do you think that hit him? Just brushed his uniform. Just got a his bit? uniform. Uh, you could you could hear it. Must have hit. Must have nicked a button because you could yeah. hear it. Yeah, it couldn't have hit much. Dykstra's run twice tonight and stolen the base. Here's the pitch to Batista. Fastball over. He grounded a third his first time up. Two outs and Thompson on at first. Fills one. That's nothing. We're in the fourth. Fly ball, left field, pretty deep. Coleman back, still going back. He can't get it, it's off his glove. Thompson steaming around third, and he'll score. Batiste safe at second on a ball that Coleman should have handled. Yeah, the fans don't like that. They don't want to, they want to see those balls caught, and, and Coleman should have caught it. He got to it, he got leather on it. He coasted back after it. Now, if he had gotten back there a little quicker, it wouldn't have been. That was a curveball, and Baptiste gave it a pretty good ride. He went up off the end of his glove. But if he had fired back there in the beginning, he would have had an easier play. Looks like they're scoring it a double and an RBI for Kim Baptiste, his 12th of the year and his fourth of the series. And the Phillies lead it two to nothing. And Morandini the batter. Line drive, that's a fair ball heading towards the corner. Batiste scores easily. Mickey on his way to second. He's coming around second. He'll go to third, and he's going to have a stand-up triple. Mickey Morandini with a triple. His fourth of the year, and the Phillies have another run lead at three to nothing. 
I well blame that on Vince Coleman, but Mickey Moore indeed, he really ripped that that curveball. Mickey has hit that getting good and well in his career. Ball was a bullet down that line into the corner. You know who will appreciate Baptiste hit more than anybody? Dave Holland. Dave Holland. Who is a team guy probably watching at home. We miss you. And look forward to seeing Dave next week when the club gets back to town. Danny Jackson, the batter, and it's over for a strike. A lot of the guys talking about Dave last night, and I know Pete and Cavillian and Darren Dalton had a talk with him. Want us to say hi to him back home. Swing and a miss at a curveball. So the Phillies have picked up all their runs in this game now with two outs. They got one in the third with two outs, and now two here in the fourth to lead it three to nothing. Well, for Doc Gooden, who's throwing the ball really well tonight. Jackson tries to check. He can. He strikes out. That's strikeout number five for Gooden. The Phillies in the inning pick up two runs on two hits, no errors, and one left. The Phillies lead it 3-0. to be wild. Oh! He's born to be cool. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all are beautiful people. And now he's born to run. Help! I've been deported! Cheech Marin. I was born in East LA! Sunday at 4 on PHL 17. This is a request from Oldsmobile to Honda. Please don't raise the price of your Accord DX anymore. Because every time you do, we have to change our Achiever commercials. So ixnay with the price increases. All this re-editing is getting expensive. It's your choice. printers from Hewlett Packard. It's easy to make it happen. Phil's return against the Florida Marlins. They're playing great baseball. Four game series beginning next Thursday. Don't forget the upper deck here is a baseball game a week from tonight. That will begin at six o'clock. Then cap day for men on Sunday. The Braves come afterwards for three games. Monday night, Tuesday night at 735. Then that business person special on Wednesday at 1235. Call 463 1,000 get your tickets. Phil's three and the Mets nothing as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. That hit batsman Whitey on the on the two strike pitch to Thompson. The ball that just barely grazed him was quite fortuitous to say the least. Well that sometimes happens even against the best of pitchers. Well you said he was going to pitch him inside and he busted him inside and just barely ticked him. Then the double by Batista the triple by Morandini two run score. Eddie Murray, the batter, he fouls it out of play. He walked his first time up. Congratulations today to Seth Cornish and Jennifer Kennard. They were married at Beaver College. John Kennard, a good friend of the Phillies, brings a lot of groups to the ballpark, and congratulations to those two. Fouled away right below us and into the crowd. Balls and two strikes on Murray. Rita Ernest, 65th birthday today in Ridley Park. Check swing by Murray. It'll go foul first base side. You uh, just clean out your pockets, huh? <laughs> and we have a birthday for Joe Shrum in Gladwin. He'll be 80 years old. Must be a neighbor. Playing that Philly Country Club, huh? <laughs> no balls and two strikes to Murray. Struck him out. Murray went out of the strike zone, chased a bad ball, and Jackson has his four strikeout one away for Bobby Bonilla. Bonilla's strikeout victim 
in the first inning. A big strikeout at the time for Jackson as Coleman was at third and Murray on at first and only one out at the time. The Mets didn't score in the inning. Have a birthday for Dwayne Trowbridge in Deptford, New Jersey. Bonilla has chased four straight balls out of the strike zone. Jackson struck him out on three pitches in the first inning. All three of them, two of them were almost in the dirt. Sliders. Hits that one off the end of the bat to Batiste. Strong throw, got him two down. Center fielder, Kim Batiste starting his second game at third base and replacing Dave Hollins will have that surgery on Tuesday. And Batiste knocking in three runs last night, knocking in one in this ball game. We have a wedding anniversary today. Doug and Judy Everett down in York. They're in the middle of some Phillies fans and Orioles fans down there. Yeah. yeah, that's a constant battle in that part of the country for their affections, for whether you're an Orioles fan or that's a great Phillies area, fan. that York area. Here's Darren Jackson. Jackson is second at bat for New York. Grounded out his first time up, chases a high fastball. Jackson firing tonight, 0-2 now on Jackson to Jackson. Well, he's been throwing well right from the get-go. He's He really came out of the bullpen with good stuff. He's been a kind of a hard luck guy. Hirschbeck almost called him out, didn't. Phillies have had some leads that Danny Jackson has left the ball game, and then they uh, haven't been able to put the team away. Last time Jackson won his ball game against Houston. This guy, Darren Jackson, at the plate coming into the game tonight, nine for 18 lifetime off Danny with two homers when he was with the Cubs and the Padres. I don't think Danny was throwing as well then. You know, he had some arm problems there for a couple of years. He's throwing now the way he threw with Cincinnati. Another ground ball. Duncan will throw on the run, and he got him. Strong inning for Danny Jackson. Three up, three down. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left. Through four, fills three, and the Mets nothing. When Bob borrowed a lawnmower, all he got was short grass. When Bob borrowed hedge clippers, all he got was nice shrubs. When Bob borrowed a ladder, all he got was red shutters. When Bob borrowed a hose, all he got was wet. But when Bob borrowed money, he got indispensable banking services. The Mellon PSFS Smart Accounts. The package accounts for people who borrow as well as save. From 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue to right here in Pennsylvania, people are searching for new choices in health care. The costs are strangling me. Which inspired Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield to create the new personal choice. It seems like you always have to give something up. A health plan that gives people the benefits of an HMO. No one has the right to tell me what doctor I can see. Without asking them to give up their freedom. Personal choice. The health plan that controls costs, not people. This is your world. Genuine and true. Working together in all that you do. Phillies lead 3-0. They scored their first run in the third with two outs. A Dykstra bloop single, a stolen base, a Duncan RBI with two outs in the fourth. A hit batsman, a double, and a triple. And that's how we stand. 3-0, top of the fifth. And here is Lenny Dykstra on a perfect night. A walk, that single white he talked about. He scored a run, stolen two bases. Fouled away left side. Lenny now with 16 steals on the year. And leading the league in runs scored. Dykstra, Duncan, and Kruk to face Doc Gooden here in the fifth inning. 
Phillies lead it three to nothing, three four and zero, oh, and zero oh, two and zero oh from New York. This is outside. Lenny said when he was hitting 230, he said, of course, Lenny says a lot of things maybe he shouldn't say, but he said somebody's going to have to pay for this, yeah. and they have. He said he'd be hitting 300 at the end of June. He's hitting 285 right now. Fouls a fastball away and out of play left side. Oh, and you're as supremely confident in your abilities the way Lenny Dykstra is. Say those kind of things because you really believe you're going to do them. And who's to say he won't? Sometimes think it's better to believe you're going to do them, but not say anything. Well, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. They know a great Ooh. catch by the second baseman, McKnight. Dykstra hit a line shot off a curveball, and McKnight leaped in the air and grabbed it and robbed him one away. Yeah, he almost ran out of arm. Watch him go up and right in the webbing of that glove. He didn't get very high in the air. No, he didn't. <laughs> he, he jumped, but he didn't get too high. No. So it fooled me on it because his feet hardly left the ground. Here's Duncan, who got a base hit his last time up, knocked in his 27th run of the year. Mariano one for two in the ball game. New York Mets have just made another deal. It's just a minor deal. They sent Wayne Housie out the other day, an infielder, and they've just traded him to Milwaukee in exchange for one of my favorite players, a right-handed pitcher by the name of Josias Manzanillo. He's coming in the lead. <laughs> yeah. Don't want to hear it. <laughs> we had him in spring training a couple times. I had to do him on the PA system. Have some fun with that name. He is a right-hander out of San Pedro de Macorís, 25 years of age. Originally out of the Boston Red Sox organization, Josias Manzanillo, now a New York Met. Here's the pitch to Duncan. Fly ball, center field. It's hit well. Darren Jackson got a good jump on it, and he's there. Waits, grabs it, two down. Duncan hit it well, but right to the center fielder. Well, they have two outs now. They can go to work. Yeah, that's right. Phillies have scored all their runs tonight, three of them with two outs. One in the third, two in the fourth. Here's Kruk. 0 for 2. John Hitless in the ball game last night. And so he's 0 for his last six. Are coming into the game at 360. Harry Bonds back to leading the league coming into play today at 369. Are battling a sore knee and he injured here in the ball game the other night at home plate. Ball strike called one and one on deck is Dalton two outs nobody on base in the fifth. That doesn't help the knee either when you have to skip rope to get out of the way of one of those low inside pitches. His legs have to move in a hurry. Count two and two now on John Cruck. Jim Fergosi looks on with hitting coach Dennis Menke. They sit and talk hitting a lot during the game. 2 2 pitch to Kruk. Ooh. Ooh. A little low? No, it wasn't low. It must have been outside. But it was close. 3 and 2 to Kruk. Breaking ball, and he missed with it. Walk number two issued by Doc Gooden. Kruk just froze on that 3-2 curveball and just hoped he missed. Uh, good and had him if it had been a strike. And Darren Dalton, he's grounded to short and then grounded the second baseman McKnight, who teamed up with Gooden on a 4-1 hookup. Darren 0 for 2. Been staying away from him so far, has Doc Gooden. leading the league in walks with 50 of them. Phillies leading the league as a team in walks. Now they have 244 walks. Darren Dalton has 49. Two balls and no strikes to Dutch. Gets the 2-0 curveball over. 
Yeah, Dalton sitting sitting on the fastball, which is what most good hitters would do at 2 0, but he didn't get it. And he did what most good hitters will do take it. Now it's 3 and 1. See how good it approaches him if he comes back with a breaking ball. Kruk nope. is on first and Eisenreich on deck. The only thing worse than taking that pitch is swinging at it. If you're not looking for it, you're not going to hit it, that's for sure. Fastball, and he had a good swing at it, fouled it back. So the count now three balls and two strikes with two outs. Kruk will be off on the pitch. Eddie Murray will probably back up. Uh, Dalton saw that 2 0 curve, and so, you know, it's in his mind that he could get a 3 2 curve. He, he's up there kind of looking for a trip for four to the end of that midnight. Here in the booth, and her assistant tonight, Sue Perloff, wants to say hi to Elliot Goldman back in Philadelphia. Jeff Kent will lead it off, followed by McKnight and Detroit, Bogar. Detroit Club leads Toronto 7 to nothing. Toronto is uh, really struggling all of a sudden. The Detroit coming into play tonight with a three-game lead. The Orioles are hot. They've won ten in a row. And they're seven out after being way behind early in the year. Jeff Kent has a base hit in the game. Jackson gets it over. One and one. Danny has walked one, struck out four thus far, surrendered two hits. He leads it three-nothing as we start the fifth inning here. The Mets half of it. Fouled out of play, hit it off the end of the bat and hooked it into the crowd down the left field line. Harry's son Todd working the ball game tonight for the New York Mets. They're one of the regular guys, Gary Cohen's out of town. Nice to see Todd here and doing so well in New York. Remember him when he was a baby? <laughs> Yeah, he is good too. He's good on the air. He's real good. One ball, two strikes. Ground ball, tough play for Duncan. Long throw, safe. Kent slides into first base, and he has his second hit of the ball game, and that's hit number three in the ball game for New York. Yeah, Duncan had to go hard to his right there, and just couldn't. Get in a throwing position quickly enough. Did you ever slide into first like that? I mean, except to avoid a tag. N never except to avoid a tag. Yeah. yeah. But you see more and more guys doing that to get base hits. And I always heard you don't get there as fast. I don't know how you can prove that or not prove. I don't think you get there as fast. Yeah. You know, but sometimes I notice on the, on steals, head first slides, you get the benefit of the call. It's close. Jeff McKnight, the batter, switch hitter. He struck out his first time up, takes a pitch low, ball one. He's a seven-hole hitter in Dallas Green's lineup. Tim Bogar, the shortstop, waits on deck. St. Louis has hit Montreal with a quick three. Three to nothing. They are in the second inning at St. Louis. Cardinals have won the first two and have moved the percentage point ahead of Montreal in the second place, ten and a half behind the Phils. McKnight grounds it towards third. It's a foul ball. Coming into play tonight, both those teams, Montreal, St. Louis, 10 and a half behind the Phillies. Montreal, 11 in the loss column, St. Louis, 10. Hard to believe, isn't it? Really. It, you know, you use those kind of numbers, and you can't believe that the Phillies are that far out in front right now. But to their credit, they're approaching every game, you know, as the game you play that night, and not think about how far ahead you are. 25 games over the 500 mark. Season high coming into play tonight. Phillies at 42 and 17, 19 and 8 on the road. One ball and one strike now to McKnight. Ground ball a second. See if they can get two. Warren Dini to Duncan. They got the double play. Two outs. McKnight had the right idea. He was trying to hit the ball the other way, but hit it right at Warren Dini. Well, Danny Jackson throws a lot of ground balls, and that's why he, he's going to have some double plays behind him. That's the second one he's picked up tonight. Bogar, the batter, now hit into one his first time up. So quickly, two outs and nobody on base for Bogar. As Whitey said, he hit into a double play. That was to Morandini, who just stepped on second and threw to first to complete the twin killing.
Bogart batting at 191. As of right now, he's the everyday shortstop for New York since they moved Tony Fernandez to Toronto yesterday. High in the air to right field. Pretty well hit, but room for Eisenreich. Jim waits in a few steps. That'll do it here in the fifth inning for New York. No runs. Ahead. Fouls it away. Goodner's walked two and not one. Eisenreich. 0 for 2 tonight, a strikeout and a ground out. Jim coming into the game batting at 360. Another one of those guys Lee Thomas picked up in the offseason is just doing a great job for the Phillies. Danny Jackson on the mound tonight has had five strong innings again. Phillies lead it three to nothing. Two balls and one strike now to Eisenreich. He was with Kansas City last season. Ground ball to Bogar, who has good actions. And throws him out. He can catch the ball. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I don't think they know what he's going to hit as of yet. I think that's the problem. They know what he's going to hit. Yeah. Not much. Well, it doesn't look like it. But he can field. If you have a good hitting team, you can live with a shortstop like that. But the Mets aren't hitting either. His very soft hands and uh, charges the ball well. Strong arm. Yeah. Thompson got it started for the Phillies in the fourth inning when he was grazed by a pitch and scored the Phil's second run and then Baptiste wound up scoring the third run later on in the inning. Strike call. Milt still hitless lifetime off. Doc Good. Both pitchers pitching very well tonight. Good and giving up two runs to the Phillies in the fourth inning. Probably shouldn't have if Coleman had caught the ball in left field that was scored a double hit by Baptiste. High chopper. Uh oh, McKnight backed up on it. And he still got him by half a step. Well, once he backed up on that, thought Thompson might be able to beat it, but he gunned him down. There's two outs. I agree with you. I felt the same thing that he should have charged that ball. I still think he should have charged it. He had time to catch it on the big hop. Especially with a guy who can run from the left side. Just got him. Well, Baptiste tonight is one for two with that double we just talked about. He's also scored a run, knocked in a run. Takes a curveball inside. All he's done in these two games is knocked in four. Single double homer, Whitey. That's it. <laughs> And as you said earlier, one of the guys that will be the happiest for him is Dave Hollins. So Phillies have really done a good job picking each other up this year. If somebody gets hurt, somebody goes into a little tailspin. They're still playing with 24. They've yet to fill the, uh, the roster hole. But they expect to do that within the next day or so. Look at there. Base hit Kim Batiste. Hit it off the end of the bat a little bit. Slung it into left field. Might have hit another curveball. Well, Kim Batiste has his second hit of the ball game and his fifth, the fifth off Gooden. It was a pretty good curveball, too. It, it down away a little bit. Reached out. Got enough of it. Hit it in the hole. Batiste is surprisingly strong. So even though he hits the ball on the end of the bat like that, he can drive it to the outfield. Morandini tripled into the right field corners last time, up knocked in around his 12th of the year on his fourth triple. <laughs> Coleman is there and makes the play. Phillies are gone here in the six. No runs, one hit, no errors. They'll leave one. Five and a half innings here at Shea Stadium. Phillies three in the match, nothing. You always save 30 to 40 percent at today's man, but right now our once a season clearance saves you a lot more. Like pure wool and wool blend suits now, two for just $1.99. Traditional European or Italian style suits in 100% wool now just $159. Pure wool designer suits are now only $199. Pure silk sport coats are now two for an incredible $99. And you'll save on thousands more items throughout every store during today's man's once a season clearance. Right now for a very limited time, so hurry. 
This is a line. To some, it is seen as a barrier. To others, it's a point where traditions of the past are abandoned in favor of visions of the future. Introducing the revolutionary new Toyota Supra. It's taken everything sports cars were before and crossed the line. Today, two airlines share one vision to join the world together as never before. Announcing the global alliance of U.S. Air and British Airways. Now, there are no boundaries. Tonight's Phillies game for the Big Apple in New York on PHL 17 is brought to you in part by the Pennsylvania Lottery. Lottery proceeds benefit older Pennsylvanians. By Jiffy Lube, America's favorite oil change. And by Bell Atlantic Mobile, advanced technology, and people who make it mean something. Doc Gooden will lead it off for New York here in the sixth, followed by the top of the order, Vince Coleman. And Charlie O'Brien, the catcher. Gooden tonight 0 for 1 with a fly ball to right. Gooden, an excellent hitting pitcher, coming into the game batting at 297 with a homer and four runs batted. It has 139 lifetime hits. Hits that one hard, but it comes right up to Batiste. And Kim throws him out, one away in the sixth. Kim doing the job with the bat and the glove at third base so far. Good might have more hits than the, our dear and good friend John Vukovic. Oh, so you said that. I... <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a slight possibility. I doubt it. Vuk had more than that. <laughs> Maybe look, not many. <laughs> look that up. <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell him you brought that up. Luke, like that. Luke could pick it, though. Oh, yeah. Coleman swings and misses. He let off with a double, but was stranded at third. There's John Vukovic setting the defenses. Don't He's tell him. No, I wouldn't think of it. He's moving Dykstra over to right center. He's one of the great minds in baseball, John Vukovic. And I'm not he just is. joshing there. You're right. He is. He really is. Luke has a real feel uh, for the game, and he does a great job with defensing the opposition and also with the pitchers on how to pitch the opposition. And as he says, the job's so much easier this year because he has pitchers who can throw the ball where you think the hitter's weaknesses are. As opposed to other years where you, you just couldn't, it just didn't work that way. One ball and two strikes now on Coleman, who's one for two with a strikeout. Danny has walked one, struck out four thus far. Surrendered three hits, all of them single or two singles and the double to Coleman. Foul ball into the crowd. Smartest thing Luke ever did was marry that Bonnie. Oh yeah. Great lady. Bonnie was up here for the weekend. She went home this afternoon, maybe watching the ball game right now. She is a fine lady, is right. Swing and a miss, another strikeout. Strikeout number five for Jackson and Vince Coleman's getting the Queen's booze right now from the crowd out here. That was because of that play in left field. He kind of mishandled Baptiste ball earlier. O'Brien, the batter, he sacrificed his first time up, hit a fly ball to Dykstra in the third. O'Brien catching for the first time in this series. Todd Hundley behind the plate in games one and two. Phillies have Ben Rivera out here tomorrow afternoon against Anthony Young at 135 or 140 the starting time. Anthony Young has 20 straight losses over two years. That scares me. <laughs> he is overdue. Here's the 1-0. Ground ball headed towards the hole. Duncan backhands and he won't get it. Nice play, Mariano Duncan. Not much chance to get thousand. Eddie Murray on a big hop to Duncan. Flips to Morandini and Danny Jackson out of another inning. A strong inning for Jackson. After six inning of play, it's the Phillies three and the Mets nothing.
Tomorrow at 7, when Reno witnesses the murder of a friend, he may be the killer's next victim on Renegade, only on PHL 17, as Harry Callis joins us. Harry? Thanks, Rich. Danny Jackson leads it off. Jackson has struck out both times that he's been up. One ball and one strike to Danny Jackson. Phil's lead at 3 nothing. Two and one. Two balls and two strikes. Him out again. That's strikeout number six for Doc Gooden. One down here in the seventh. It'll bring on Lenny Dykstra. Lenny's walked singled and lined out. He's stolen two bases and scored a run. The Marlins have taken a 3 2 lead on Pittsburgh. Down to Joe Robbie in the sixth inning. Three run home run by Junior Felix. They just recalled him from the minor leagues a couple days ago. Felix. If they beat the Pirates tonight. They'll move in front of Pittsburgh. One ball and one strike to Lenny Dykstra. Hey, one thing, if Florida ever gets a late lead, they got a pretty good chance of winning it with Brian Harvey out there in the bullpen. Yeah. Good closer. Bouncing ball charged by McKnight. Throws Dykstra out. That's two down, and that'll bring up Mariano Duncan. Duncan is one out of three, is grounded out, single to knock in a run, and fly to deep center. Bills lead it here in the seventh, three to nothing. One strike to Duncan. Strikes to him. Gooden has those powerful legs and he really uses them. It fouled on the third base side. And two it holds to Mariano Duncan. <laughs> Duncan's out on strikes. Seven strikeout for Doc. No runs, hits, errors, and none left. Stretch time at Shea. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Bills lead the Mets. Three nothing. of destruction themselves. A friend's murder pushes Reno over the edge. It's between me and the man who did it. And onto a collision course with the killer. <laughs> now Reno's out for revenge. The stormtrooper stuff is not the way we do it here. And this time it's personal. I'm gonna get him my way. <laughs> on the next <laughs> Renegade. Sunday at 7 on PHL 17. We know how to help you save on Dodge Caravan during the National Minivan Sale. Take this one. You can get over $1,800 in total savings, including air and no extra charge with the Family Value Package. 
or check out this loaded Grand Caravan LE with $2,600 in total savings, including sale prices on some of our most popular luxury options, only at the minivan store. See your nearest Dodge dealer. We know how to help. Recently, an object was sighted. It was big. Bigger than big. Huge, huge, large, astronomically big. Big would be an understatement. Very big. Huge. Long guy. Big. Huge. When it arrives, you better not be alone. Bigfoot. Pizza Hut. From Pizza Hut. Two square feet of pizza. 21 slices on a tasty new crust. $10.99 for up to three toppings. It's bigger than Pizza Pizza. Bigfoot from Pizza Hut. A legendary value. Hello, I'm Dick Vermeil. Can diet reduce your risk of colorectal cancer? Studies indicate that eating a high-fiber, low-fat diet can reduce your risk for colorectal cancer. Eat more fruit and cut your fat intake to about 30% of your total diet. Give you a quick recap. Danny Jackson has allowed no runs on four hits. He has five strikeouts. He's walked two. Gooden has given up three runs on five hits, seven strikeouts, and two bases on balls. Kim Batiste, two for three with an RBI and a run scored. The Mets, three, four, and five hitters combined 0 for 6. Got that one off the end of the bat, not deep in left field, and Milt Thompson will catch the fly ball off the bat of Bonilla, one down. That'll bring on Darren Jackson. Kelly's knew they were getting a pretty good starting pitcher when they got Danny Jackson but I think he has exceeded all expectations so far this year. Yeah, you know, somebody scouted him. The Phillies weren't lucky they had scouted him at the last half of last season. And they the report was that he was really throwing the ball well, you know, about the way he threw it when he was with the Cincinnati Reds and so they they picked him up. Been kind of a, as Wheels mentioned earlier, an, a, an unlucky pitcher in that he's left some games where they've had leads. But in games in which he started, the Phillies are nine and three. Though so he certainly kept the Phillies in every game except one. That was uh, the outing he had at Candlestick. Trucks over near the stands, but he's going to run out of room. Two balls and a strike to Darren Jackson. Darren Jackson. Out number two. Batiste shows you a good arm at third base. Well, he has a good arm, and he'll he'll play third. Third's easier to play than short. No reflection on third baseman, but it's, it's just the ball gets to you quicker. You don't have as much uh, movement. Well, he has a strong arm. I think they knew he could field at third. They didn't know he was going to hit quite so well. One ball and no strikes to Jeff Caddy. He's two out of two with a pair of singles. Fouls it off one and one. More bad news for the Mets. Howard Johnson is going to be placed on the disabled list retroactive to June 11th with a viral condition. To purchase the contract of Doug Sanders Saunders from Norfolk, the AAA club. Fouled into the Phil's dugout. Jordan, Chamberlain, Millette. Just taking it easy. And two strikes to Kent. Miss with it, two and two. On a cool night here at Shea, so Danny Jackson is still strong. It's been a while since Danny has pitched a complete game. Pop up into shallow right. Mickey Moore and Dee makes the grab. That'll retire the side. No runs, hits, errors, and none left. We go to the eighth inning. Phil's lead, three inning. Crucker has grounded out, struck out, and walked. 
Bill's got one in the third, an RBI single by Duncan, two in the fourth. RBI double by Baptiste and a triple by Moore and Beanie. Jackson chases that one down. Nice running grab by Jackson, who got a good jump on the ball. Well hit by Kruk, one down. That'll bring on Darren Dalton. Dutch is 0 for 3. He has grounded out all three times that he's been up. Again, for the Phillies, it's been the leadoff man in the tail end of the order that has done the damage against Doc Gooden. Baptiste Morandini and Dykstra. There's a hit to right center field going all the way back to the fence. Dalton on his way to second. He'll roll in with a stand-up double. Dutch finally got a pretty good pitch to hit. Fast ball and out over the plate a little. Gooden really hasn't given him much to swing at tonight. Brings on Jim Eisenreich, who has struck out and twice grounded out. High with it. One ball and no strikes. two strikes he's also pitched Eisenreich tough tonight with been trying to get him to hit the curveball pass ball base hit right field late start by Dalton and he'll have to be held at third Well, the Phillies have runners at first and third with one down. Dalton had to make sure the ball was not going to be caught before it went through. So Boa had to hold him at third base, and the batter is Milt Thompson. Eisenreich got a fastball to hit. He first time tonight he's had one to hit. Bill Thompson has grounded out, been hit by a pitch ball, and grounded out. That's a play the infield, a double play depth. One and nothing to Thompson. Milton usually puts the ball in play. Not an easy man to double either. But he has all kinds of trouble against Doc Gooden. 0 for 25 lifetime. He's due. <laughs> yeah. He's overdue. <laughs> one ball and one strike. Two and one. Mill will be looking for the fastball. I don't know if he'll get it. Nope. Third ball. Third ball for a called strike, two and two. through ducking line drives when he stopped pitching, I guess. Nice ball. Up and in. Full count. Let's see if they send Eisenreich here. I think they will. Nope. Might get another hook. Full count. 
bump to Milt Thompson with Philly runners first and third and one down here in the eighth. Eisenreich does go and it's tapped right in front of the plate. Thompson is thrown out. Dalton had to hold a third, two down, and that'll bring on Kim back. Dave Talgator is pitcher up in the Mets bullpen, just up from Norfolk. Baptiste lost a foul out of play. No. One ball of one strike to Baptiste. And Detroit nine nothing over Toronto in the fifth inning. Yeah. Like Stoudemire said, forget the hook. Go with the heat. He's thrown all three fastballs. Two strikes. A little bit high with a fastball. Two and two. Billy runners at second and third with two down. Phil's lead three nothing. We're in the eighth inning. This is low with it a full count. Thrown five straight fastballs. You think now that Batiste would think he'll get another one. Line drive oh. just foul down the right field line. Just barely foul. Good pitch to it was down and away. It was a strike. Pitcher's pitch. Still three and two to Kim Baptiste. Ground ball, but at third baseman Kent throws across in time to get Baptiste, and that'll retire the. Jeff McKnight leads it off. McKnight has struck out and grounded into a double play. Pops a foul out of play. No balls and a strike to McKnight. Danny Jackson. Working on a four hit shutout. Scattered those hits. No two hits in one inning. That's had their best scoring opportunity in the first. And Vince Coleman led off with a double and was sacrificed to third, and Eddie Murray walked, but then Bobby Bonilla struck out going after bad pitches, and Aaron Jackson grounded out. One ball and one strike. Two and one. Let's keep a right hander up in the bullpen, so it would appear they will hit for Doc Gooden. Center field. Thompson makes the running grab. McKnight is out, one down. That'll bring on Tim Bogar. <laughs> Bogar is grounded into a double play and flied out to right field. Joe Walker has moved into the on-deck circle. The 
bat for Doc Gooden. So Doc will leave the game. He pitched well, but Lee's trailing three nothing. Tap toward shortstop. Duncan charges. Got him. That's two down, and that'll bring on Chico Walker to bat for Gooden. Batting for the pitcher, Doc Gooden. Number 34, Chico Walker. Walker is hitting a 216. Switch hitter batting a lot better right handed than left. Hitting 346 right handed, 146 left handed. As a pinch hitter, he's just four for 23. And he smacks that ball into left field for a hit. Single to left, hit number five given up by Jackson. That'll bring up Vince Coleman. Doubled and twice struck out. One strike to it. And two to Coleman. Larry Anderson, the right hander, David West, the left hander, up in the Phillies bullpen. Danny Jackson's last complete game came in 89. Ooh, just missed. One ball and two strikes. Play still one and two. Ball and two strikes to Vince Coleman. Chico Walker at first with two outs. with the off speed pitch two and two ground ball tapped to second base Warren Dean throws Coleman out that'll retire the side no runs one hit no errors and one left we go to the ninth Phil's lead three nothing and for the Mets in the ninth inning He's a 26-year-old, 6'3", 212 pounds. Comes out of Middletown, New York. And at Norfolk this year, he was 6-3 in 12 games, 11 starts, a 3.07 ERA, also had one save. About 70 innings, giving up 75 hits, 24 runs. Good strikeout walk ratio, 48 strikeouts and 17 walks. Graduate of the University of Massachusetts. Telgater spells his last name T-E-L-G-H-E-D-E-R. And Mickey Morandini skies a foul. It's going to go out of play. Mickey, one out of three, was an RBI triple. And he has four triples now among the league leaders in that department. Sparky Anderson's club's pouring it on Toronto. They're in the sixth inning. It's now 12 to nothing. Detroit. That would give them a four-game lead. Yeah. yeah. They're winning their third in a row against Toronto. And St. Louis is 
pounding Montreal. That's now nine nothing in the fourth inning at St. Louis. One ball and two strikes. Now eleven nothing St. Louis. Fouls it out of play. Still one and two. Danny Jackson is in the on deck circle. As we mentioned, Jackson has not pitched a complete game since '89. Last shutout he pitched was '88. Chase the low breaking ball. So Telgator strikes out the first major league hitter he faces. And it'll bring on Danny Jackson. Jackson has struck out all three times that he's been up. Here's Danny Jackson. Strike to him. Alice Green might like this young pitcher. He's throwing strikes. They've had their bullpen woes, have the Mets. Breaking ball. Third ball for a strike. One and two. Gator in his major league debut he gets a couple of strikeouts. Very unlikely that he will strike out the side because the man coming up now is the fourth toughest in the league to strike out. Lenny Dykes trees one out of three has walked single lined out and grounded out. Stolen two bases and scored a run. One ball and one strike. Wild thing, Mitch Williams starting to throw in the Phillies bullpen. Nice for fists a foul left field side. Coleman a long run can't make the play. It's in the stands. Oh, he did make the play. He cut that ball. I thought that fan. ball was off a of fan, wasn't it? Looked like it. Take a look at it here. No. Just, just got a it. great catch to retire the side. No one runs it off for New York here in the ninth inning. He's one out of two with an infield single. One ball and no strikes. Mitch Williams up in the Phillies bullpen in case Danny Jackson runs into trouble here in the ninth. Off the plate umpire Mark Hirschbeck that jars him. There's Mitch. One ball and one strike. Two and one. Strike called two and two. That was pitch number one hundred for Danny Jackson. So here in the ninth, he has not thrown. Over a amount of pitches. Normally, if you pitch a complete game, it's around the 120, 130 mark. 
Ground ball to shortstop. Mariano Duncan retires O'Brien. That's one down. And it's a nice, cool night, so he's, he hasn't worked up a real heat out there. And he hasn't been involved in any inning where he's thrown a whole lot of pitches, probably through the most pitches in the first inning. He's got a couple of double plays behind him. Here's Eddie Murray. He has walked. The only walk given up by Danny Jackson. He has struck out and hit into a fielder's choice. Taps it. They'll let it roll and it goes foul. No balls and a strike to Eddie Murray. Bills lead 3 nothing. One strike to Eddie Murray. Lops a high fly ball. It's fouled on the right field side. And Jim Eisenreich makes the catch near the stands for out number two. I've seen a lot of good right fielders in my day, but none that I can recall that can catch balls in foul ground with the stands near him as readily as that man. <laughs> We've seen him do that all year. Well, he goes in there among the people and <laughs> comes out with the ball most of the time. He really does. That's two down, and that'll bring on Bobby Bonilla. And a cut fouled it back. Bobby Bo is nothing out of three. Two outs here in the ninth inning. Just missing a little bit high, one and one. Missing high again, two and one. Jackson is still throwing very hard. Some mustard on that fastball. Two balls and a strike to Bobby Bonilla. Missing low. Three and one. Base hit taken on one hop by Milt Thompson. So Bonilla is a two out base. Jackson it was 0 for 3 tonight, three ground outs. It's the first hit out of these three, four, and five hitters. They make that the yeah, three, four, and five. That's right. Middle of the order. Danny Jackson is one more out here. Leading at three nothing. One strike to Darren Jackson. Well with it one of one. Two strikes. Darren Jackson trying to get two runs with that swing. Well, 
Fly ball to right. This should be the ball game. Jim Eisenreich squeezes it. Danny Jackson's first complete game since 1989. His first shutout since 1988. What a masterful job by Danny Jackson. A complete game. 3 nothing win over the New York Mets scattering six singles as the Phils have won three in a row in this series here at Shea. Kim Baptiste, an RBI double. Mickey Moore and Beanie, an RBI triple. Mariano Duncan, an RBI single. That's all the left-hander Danny Jackson needed. What a job by Danny Jackson. The Phils winning at 3-0. Back with the toes and a recap in just a moment.